Hello, everyone. I'm James Milan. Welcome to this episode of The Library Show. It has been a little while, um, but we are delighted to be back with our library director, Anna Litton, and also joined by Adam Del, Del Molino from the Library's Board of Trustees. You'll also notice we're not in our uh, normal space uh, at the Robbins Library, which gets a lot of attention in, in town. Instead, we are at the Fox because there's some big news coming up related to the Fox, and we're going to be talking to Anna and Adam about that today. Um, and we are just really, really happy to be here. Anna, thanks so much for opening the Fox for us this morning. Yeah, it's always a pleasure to talk about my favorite topic, Arlington's Public Libraries, and it is really a true pleasure to get to be here today to speak with you specifically about Arlington's Branch Library located here at 175 Mass Ave, our booming and bustling location in East Arlington. Yeah, so I mean, I think we should uh, remind folks that obviously I said, you know, somewhat glibly, but nonetheless appreciatively at the beginning, Robbins does get a lot of attention. There it is right in the center of town. It's an architectural marvel and it's just lovely to be in, etc. But the Fox has been an important part of this community for a really long time. And the last 10 years, it's quite dramatic from what I understand. So just tell us a little bit about like Fox you know, circa 2020, 2013 and versus Fox now. Yeah, um, I'm going to begin and then I'm going to have Adam fill in some of the details. Um, the First of all, I do want to let you share with you that the uh, Arlington has been serving the community in East Arlington through a location here, a branch library in East Arlington, since 1917. In 1917, the Fox Branch Library first opened as the location it, that in what is currently... Um, which was then the Crosby School, mm -hmm. which is uh, now the building right around the corner from us. Um, library services opened up on Mass Ave in 1961 here in this location. And this library has been an important piece of the community fabric here since then. In 2013, this library was much smaller in many ways than it is now. It was open many fewer hours. We served many fewer people. At that time, we were serving about 20,000 visitors a year, and we were open three days a week. At this stage, here, sitting here today, in 2023 in this library, we serve about 80,000 visitors a year. We are open five days a week. We have visitors from young children who are here to play. We, are, we have increasingly remote workers and students who are using our space to find a quieter space to work during the day or get out of their homes. Uh, this library, every single time I come in here, it is busier than the last time I was here. And it is truly exciting to see the growth in um, visitors to see the way that this library is able to meet the really the growing needs of the community for community space and library services in East Arlington. Yeah, it's, I mean, those are stunning numbers. I mean, 80,000, just try and break that down by, by week. It's quite impressive. Um, and what I would say is obviously a lot of changes uh, in the last 10 years at the Fox. A lot of changes coming up, so let's talk about that. So we are here specifically today to talk about a new project for the Fox. Um, in you know, I'll just I'll let you guys decide who's going to speak to what part of that. Yeah, but. I'm going to let Adam speak first. And really, how this isn't a new project. We have been thinking about ways to improve this building for a while. Yeah, so um, I've been on the board of trustees since 20, 2008. And one of the things that I think is really important to think about is back in 2017, 2018, we engaged in this project as part of the Board of Trustees and we used some money to do some planning called Reimagining Our Libraries. And when we did Reimagining Our Libraries, we really wanted to take a look at both the Fox and the Robbins branches. One of the things that's really important to think about here at the Fox branch is the inaccessibility of this library. You can't go into this building without taking uh, one step up to get into the building. You cannot get access to the downstairs floors of the building. There is not an elevator, so it is wheelchair inaccessible. As a parent of a child with disabilities, I know the importance of being able to provide services in a library for all, no matter where we are located, whether it's at the Fox or the Robbins, and it's really, really important that we kind of engage in this process. In 2017, 2018, we put that process together. We had surveys. We did listening sessions. We did a whole raft of work. We worked with an architectural firm. I think it's called Anum now. And we worked with Anum, um, and they put together a really beautiful 
picture of what this building could potentially look like with all those accessibility features that we need for this location. Um, unfortunately, the pandemic hit and things changed a little bit and it caused us to reprioritize as a board and working with our library director in terms of uh, what the best needs are and how we should kind of uh, pursue additional funding for all the kind of the capital needs and projects that we need at both libraries, but really truly focusing on the opportunity that we have here with, uh, with the Fox. So I'll let you handle the rest of it. Yeah, um, I just really want to thank Adam for being so clear about the accessibility issues here. Libraries are for all. Libraries need to be for all. And this library, this space right now here that we are sitting in is not accessible. And we are leaving out members of our community. That is never the goal of a public library. We are always looking to create opportunities for every single member of our community. So this year, in 2023, uh, the Massachusetts Public Library Construction Program opened their grant round and uh, invited libraries in Massachusetts to submit a letter of intent to apply for the Massachusetts Public Library Construction Program grant funding. Uh, which can fund up to 50% of eligible costs for construction projects. This is a wonderful opportunity for us to revisit the conversations that we had in the 2017-2018 period, as well as pull in new information that we have learned about how library use has changed, how our community has changed in the post-pandemic period. We all know so much is different about how residents are using libraries, about what community needs are. Even the demographics of our community have changed in the, that time period. Uh, the town submitted a letter of intent in April, and we are now um, working on preparing our grant for uh, application in May of 2024. In the library recently contracted with a library planning, a uh, library space planning consultant, uh, Anders Dahlgren of La Library Planning Associates has been working with us to help us understand and define community needs so that we can think about what the library spaces, collections, and services are that best meet those needs. So we are really focusing all of our conversations right now in what community needs are. What what does the community need, aside from an accessible building? Mm -hmm. What kind of spaces are, is the community looking for in East Darlington? And how can we best develop those spaces? Um, Andrew has held a number of focus groups in November. Right now, community members, we hope all community members, take the opportunity to fill out our survey that's available uh, at robinslibrary.org. And we, Andrews will be back conducting some uh, open public forums to help him learn even more about community needs in Arlington uh, in January. Those public forums will be on January 11th and January 13th here at the Fox Branch Library, and as well as a Zoom opportunity uh, on January 17th. So right now, we are again, we are still learning. We are learning about what our community really needs and how we can design a building, services, and collections that best meet those needs. Yeah, I mean, it really is exciting to think about the possibilities, but I also want to uh, reiterate what you said, Adam, about the, you know, the, just the absolute dire essential importance of making this ADA compliant because uh, you, you said that, you know, you can't get downstairs and downstairs is where the bathroom is, among other things, right? Yeah. So this is, that's just not a tenable situation, I understand. Yeah, and, and I think, I think too, the thing to remember is we've got a, a great planner here in Anders. Uh, he's done libraries in, in Cambridge, he's done libraries in Woburn. Um, you know, we did a really rigorous process to put together in our working group that we do with members of our community to really think about and choose the best and select the best person for this job. Um, we also are really lucky to have a great leadership from the town um, you know not only I would say from our municipal leaders um, but also from our state legislative delegation mm. really been helpful they've set aside some money in, in the capital needs program that we can be able to access to help build that you know that that elevator that we're going to need for that accessibility issue so and that's money that's kind of set aside we can use it when we you know have the plan when we have the funding from the town when we have the planning grant hopefully from the mass board of library commissioners and if we can put all that together um, it's really exciting about what we could do here at this location okay so i just want to make sure that i understand what you just said well and that our audience does also 
Um, what you're saying is that our legislators have been responsible for coming up with some money mm -hmm. uh, so as to be able to install an elevator here in this library, whatever the rest of the place looks like, whatever the other changes that yes. are made, that is going to be available and also funded in that way. So Arlingtonians don't have to worry about that in a sense. Yes, correct. That's obviously really good news. Um, the so it seems like the project itself, or what, whatever happens here at the Fox, will have to both kind of observe guidelines that are that come from other places, you know, again, in terms of ADA compliance, et cetera. So you'll have to have that whole as a, as a track. But then you're also extremely, as you just articulated, and you're very, very interested in the rest of it being the result of changes that the community informs you that they want to see or things that they, uh, elements in the new library that they want to see. So let's just go back again for a second and do this kind of before the pandemic and after the pandemic uh, comparison because uh, I know from getting to talk to you, getting to talk to Andrea, your predecessor in the, in the early days of the pandemic, et cetera, that, that there were just changes in processes, changes in services, et cetera. What are some of those things that you guys know are going to need to be maintained here at the library because they're so popular with people or will be, you know, something something new that the library hadn't offered before? Yeah, I'm going to start. Um, this library is such an important area for young children. This is a great early childhood resource here. We are sitting here in the children's area at the Fox Branch Library. And uh, when this library is open, this is always a bustling area where kids are engaging with those early literacy skills that lead to a lifetime of learning, lead to academic success, and to be honest, lead to a lot of fun in your life. <laughs> Reading should always be fun. Libraries should always be fun. Um, so those core services will always be here. We also see such a need for additional workspace for community members. Um, and one of the changes that I have seen in the pre and post pandemic years here is the way that our adult seating has been used. Before the pandemic, we would not see adults sitting in chairs and tables and working for hours at a time. There is now not enough space for adults who wanna find a work area in East Arlington here at the Fox Branch Library. So looking forward to finding ways to better meet that really identified community need at this stage. We, we've been talking about the inaccessibility of our lower level. Community space is so important in libraries. There are very few places in communities where uh, a community group can have a meeting, can um, bring members of their community together to talk about the issues that are important to them. And library community spaces have always been important in that. Mm -hmm. So making sure that we are able to offer community spaces that meet the needs for community groups to hold their meetings or their knitting clubs or whatever it might be is truly important here. Making sure that we have those spaces, but if those spaces aren't accessible, it's they're not actually, we don't really have them if they're mm -hmm. not accessible. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so. we don't want to presuppose it too, but we also do want to think about the fact that too, like we want these spaces to be available when the library isn't open too. One of the things that's always been a challenge if you've ever tried to, especially I remember going back years ago now, is that you wanted to get the keys to the library, to the space downstairs. You had to go through the recreation department and get the key from the recreation yeah. department in order to be able to use that space after hours when the library wasn't open, right? So how do we think creatively about you know providing accessible uh, entrances and exits to be able to get into the building as well so that it is truly accessible when people want to be able to use it especially early morning hours later evening hours and I don't want to presuppose anything from the information right. that we're going to be collecting but um, that's just kind of one of the, one example like I mean we're, we're, we're in a library here now that as I said I think previously historically we think about but it was on the verge of, verge of closure mm -hmm. back in the early mm -hmm. 2000s and and now to have 80,000 visitors uh, coming in uh, you know per year is just it's a remarkable transformation and turnaround and we've been able to kind of work with the town to be able to bring in more resources to be able to provide the opening to, to the library, which I think is really important. I do feel like I also have to quickly mention our incredible, I like to call them our sweet mates. Uh, we are very lucky here at the Fox Branch Library to also be co-located with the Fox and Robin shop, a resale shop that directly supports library services and operations. Um, it is 
so interesting the way that we really work in synergy with the Fox Shop. Uh, I'm sure so many of the listeners have experienced yeah, sure. shopping at the Fox Shop. And we are looking forward to continuing that partnership going forward, that that location really does uh, work so well with our mission. We are able to support the community in a number, number of different ways by continuing to build that relationship. Mm -hmm. And I, I have to say, just echoing both of you, that you know, I've been living in the town for almost 30 years now, raised uh, our children here, spent plenty of time in this room uh, in those years. But those were back in the lean years. It's really true, as Adam was saying. This place was... Uh, you know, it was just underutilized and uh, it, 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 it just had that feeling of kind of, ooh, it's, it might just slip away. And instead, it's, there's been this enormous reinvigoration, uh, obviously in tandem with East Arlington in general, mm -hmm. which is a very vibrant, uh, as we know, part of our town yeah. um, at this point. So, serve, you know, making this, uh, you know, I don't know if it's going to be state of the art or if we want to talk about that kind of thing at all, but with the changes that I'm sure are going to be uh, possible uh, under your guys' vision and under, you know, and with the, the these 50 percent, you know, grant help uh, will help. Uh, it really does seem like it's it's going to f be right in line with the growth of this part of Arlington as well. Um, let me ask you uh, about something. I s recently spoke to um, the director of our Department of Planning and Community Development for a DPCD update. Claire Ricker told me at that time that uh, that there's also the possibility. Look that that there's. There's a consideration of the possibility of having um, possibly some housing added to uh, this, this building as well, obviously building up from uh, the existing building. Um, I, I know that that's all very speculative in a sense, et cetera, but I wondered if you wanted to speak to that at all as well. You want to start? No, I, I think one of the things um, that's really important to think about is this is a library first project. Um, that we are here to work on the, the plans and the kind of the the kind of what we want to see in the vision of the future of the library here in Arlington. Again, as we said, a library for all. That's really the kind of the critical, most important piece. The town has been very fortunate to be able to engage with other folks to talk a little bit about potentially, could we co-locate housing um, with this branch library that we have here right now? Um, so that's a, a part of this process. What we're seeing across the country is a lot of folks are kind of utilizing and thinking about how can we creatively use the resources that we have, particularly municipally owned buildings, to build new facilities and, and to add to the housing stock in many of our communities. We're talking about the Globe article this weekend um, that it basically says, you know, the West End Branch Library in the city of Boston is building a, anticipating a huge facility with housing on top of their library. Um, a really creative idea and approach. There's other libraries that have kind of gone down this road in Chicago and in other cities to sit there and say, well, what can we do here? We have this piece of land, we have this opportunity, so we're gonna take a look at it, and, and the, the town wants to take a look at it and see what we could potentially do um, as part of this project, but a really unique opportunity. Um, I know there's a lot of conversations in the community about housing generally, and it you know, kind of engenders a lot of uh, conversation and passion in people, um, but we definitely think this is a good opportunity um, to, to consider you know, what could we potentially do as well here um, with this great location that we have. I think we are so lucky to have uh, Claire Ricker as our partner. Uh, we don't, we are not housing people. We don't <laughs> want to build a lot of buildings. What we want to do is build wonderful library services, collections, and spaces. Uh, and whatever happens, I'm really excited that Claire has this opportunity to investigate the potential for co-locating housing. But our real mission here is to think about the library space. We think about the what are we doing within the walls of the library and uh, learning from the community about what they want to see within those walls. Adam said it so well. This is a library first project. No matter what happens, no matter what Claire learns, we are really looking forward to improving our library space here. Yeah, and you were saying that you, you, you want to follow the guidelines that you, you know, of, of community input, basically. And I know before we went on air that we were talking and you mentioned, Anna, that you've already had hundreds of comments. Um, you you, you uh, put the survey uh, up and you've already had, excuse me, not comments, but responses uh, on that. A anything that you, any, any kind of themes that are emerging uh, already or... 
want to pull out, uh, as I mentioned, our space planning consultant, Anders Dahlgren, was here in November. Every single time he talks to someone, he says he just hears the community passion for this location and how much the Fox Branch Library means to the 80,000 visitors a year who come through the doors here. And he, he works with libraries across the country and he just really says, I see that this is a special location for the community. Uh, the Fox provides such a special space in East Arlington and we're just looking to continue making the space more special for our community here. Uh, this is a part of town with a lot of multifamily housing. Uh, people here are living in the smaller footprint sometimes than in other parts of town and to have this true community living room where people can come gather see their neighbors connect with other people in town is it is such a gift to be able to offer that space to the community as well as our traditional library services of providing um, we circulated last year about 150,000 items from this location so that as well <laughs> we are it is such a gift to serve the community through this location and I just continue looking forward to doing that even more effectively yeah, I mean, these are crazy numbers, really, when yeah. you talk about 80,000 visitors, 150,000 items. These are, that, that, that's, those are like big city library numbers. Uh, yeah. No doubt about it. Yeah, so. and you, we think about it, we are, what, fourth? In, in, in Massachusetts in terms of our, our use and our attendance yeah, of our programming? Our, um, we are the fifth highest circulating library leaving out Boston. Yes. And we can't compare ourselves <laughs> to Boston. So if we leave Boston out, Arlington is the fourth highest circulating library in Massachusetts. Uh, last year in FY23, Arlington circulated, Arlington residents checked out about 950,000 items from our libraries. <laughs> Which is crazy. I was responsible for a certain amount of that. <laughs> Good. I, my goal is to get to a million. Let's circulate a million items in our libraries. Yeah. And this location is so key in that, that the numbers of items that people check out from this library, the number of times people put their holds to pick up their items from this library. It's more convenient to swing in here than to come up to the center. Mm -hmm. Great. I want that to be easy for people. I want it to be easy and accessible for people to get their library materials. Um, I uh, just want to congratulate you for your restraint in not saying almost a million already <laughs> because it, cause it's, uh, it must have been so tempting. Well, we are going to get there. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Nice round number sitting right out there exactly. uh, for, the, for the taking. Um, so I just want to make sure that we have not forgotten anything that's important to talk about because the last thing I want to do is just, again, go over for people what the upcoming dates and, and, and events of importance are. Um, but have we have we missed anything big that we really should be talking about here? I mean, I think the next big thing that's going to come up, so we are inviting community members, as we said, to fill out our survey. We're inviting community members to attend our open public forums. We are looking forward to um, presenting a warrant article to town meeting in uh, April of 2024, April, May, uh, Springtown meeting. Our grant does require that town meeting approves a appropriation of $150,000 for planning and design. And we are going to be offering over the next few months, we're going to be offering a number of different opportunities for town meeting members as well as the community at large to learn more about the Fox and why supporting this Warren article is really supporting a better community for everyone in Arlington. Mm -hmm. and, and as part of that process, uh, we do and we are going to be offering tours, yep. tours of the building. We want people to come in and see the building, see what it means when we talk about the accessibility issues. Look and think about like, you know, do you have to take that front step? How can you get and access the downstairs part of the building? Because if you can't, you're not going to be able to, to access the services here. And like we said, we want this to be a library for all. Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit of a tough message here in, in a sense that, you, that you're giving because you're saying at this at, at at the same at the same time you're saying this place has been important for a long long time is a treasure uh, in the area all, all of which i agree with by the way um but you're also saying and it really needs to be better 
That's right. Yeah. Uh, and again, better really means first and foremost more accessible, but better also means again better able to respond to the demand for services. Uh, and to changes in those services, et cetera, that you have already seen over the years and can anticipate there's plenty of changes to come, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, any final words then on uh, on the project that, uh, you know, is, I can tell, of palpable excitement for you guys and for me now and soon for the audience, I'm sure. No, just thank you for the opportunity to kind of come and have this conversation with you and kind of give you a sense of as to what, you know, all the hard work that Anne has been doing uh, to get this all up and running because it, it's really a great opportunity to to speak to the community about this issue and allow them to understand and come see why this building is such a gem and why we want to sit there and, and make it even better. I just want to really kind of thank Adam and so many people who put work into thinking about this library back in the 2017 and 2018 period. The foundation that we have, we have really been able to take and move forward into really looking at post-pandemic needs. It is uh, a real honor to help the group of dedicated library users who started this conversation all those years ago kind of come back, circle back to this conversation. This is still important for us. And what are we going to be doing next to make sure that we are able to continue this journey to bring the library to the community that this community truly deserves? Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, just to reiterate surveys, visits, forums, tours, et cetera. You are inviting the public in as many ways as you can to weigh in on this, and I'm sure that there will be a response. Yeah, or your is public already. library is your public library. We are not doing, we, we want to design the library that meets needs in our community, and we can only do that when we hear from, from our community members. All right, well, we are going to definitely look forward to monitoring and charting the progress of this whole string of events that in the end is going to make our our community of Arlington even richer. Uh, can you imagine that? Um, uh, I would want to thank you both for your time and again for opening up this lovely little space in, in, at the Fox for us this morning. Um, I have been speaking for this library show episode about the Fox uh, with Anna Litton, the director of our library system, and with Adam Del Molino, who is Congratulations on your 15 years. Least, I think I least. just did the math uh, <laughs> on the Board of Trustees for the library. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you both for your time. We really do appreciate their time, and we appreciate yours as well. I'm James Milan. We'll see you next time. We hope that you attend our open community forums on January 11th, January 13th, or on Zoom on January 17th. Subscribe to our newsletter at robinslibrary.org.